J.A. Rogers gives us another exposure to ancient ideas about Ham and how the black people became black. You know, I, I was, I was uh, I, what I do each week so that I can know exactly where I left off. I preview, I get a videotape of, like, for instance, this service today, and I'll take it with me. And then next Saturday, just before Sunday, then I'll sit down and I'll go over this tape again to refresh myself and, 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 you know, be sure that I got all of my points that I want to make. And um, I was thinking about it last night, going through all this stuff we've been reading that's been historically documented. It is absolutely mind boggling to me that all these, and pl remember now, this is not what? Personal. Personal. I'm a heavy hitter. And I know it could come across and be pretty, you know, smack you right upside the head, but it's not intentional. In other words, I'm not gunning for anybody. So don't take anything personal unless you're guilty. If you're guilty, then swallow the pill. Amen. Don't have a baby. <laughs> but I was thinking about it because, see, it's not black folk that started all this stuff about the curse of ham and, and where black folk got their color. That wasn't started by black people. That was started by white folks. Okay. Your ancestors might not be you, but your ancestors. But you know what? What struck me last night while I was listening to the tape, watching and viewing the tape, it hit me. I said, isn't it amazing how all these people can come up with all of these absolutely crazy and nonsensical ideas about where black folk got their color and it amazes me that they would never have thought that maybe we got our color from the same place you got yours. That never occurred. Our color has to be a curse. Your color came from God. On page 316, Mr. Rogers says, and I quote, the beliefs that the descendants of Ham, that is the Egyptians and Ethiopians, became black because Ham was cursed by Noah, originates in the Talmud, Midrash, and other rabbinical writings of from the 2nd to the 5th century A.D., end of quote. Quoting again, there are three, say three, Three principal versions of this legend, all of which have a basis in sex relations. End of quote. Quoting again, Mr. Rogers says, the chief one is that Noah forbade all the persons and the animals in the ark to have sexual intercourse. Ham disobeyed the order. The dog followed his bad example. And the raven, as a result, all three were cursed. Ham was made black. The dog was attached to the body of the female after intercourse. And the raven, which had incited the other animals to have intercourse, was punished by being made to copulate through the mouth. This is found in Sanhedrin 108b. Mr. Rogers, the historian, is quoting where he got this information. Anybody, but, you know. Now, the Broadman Bible Commentary, copyright 1969 to 72, published by Broadman Press, Nashville, Tennessee, on page 147 and 148, further validates this curse of Ham idea. Commenting on Genesis 9, verses 18 to 29, I quote, there is hardly an Old Testament passage more difficult to interpret. This scripture, was, this scripture was the favorite text of Southern preachers during the Civil War as they asserted the right of white men to enslave the Negro, often used in recent times to defend segregation. The passage is the unrecognized source of the common saying, a Negro is all right in his place by which is meant that his proper position is secondary to that of the white man. End of quote. Broadman goes on to say, and I quote again, were the Canaanites actual descendants of Ham? We know little about their origin. 
but it is certain that either ethnically, politically, or both, they were descendants of Ham. Another thing is clear, that they were not Negroes. The curse of Canaan is in, the curse of Canaan in no way has a bearing upon the vexing black-white problem of our times. Some expositors insist, however, that Noah's curse must have fallen upon all of Ham's descendants. Canaan was singled out by Noah, but obviously, they say, Ham himself must have been cursed if his sons had such a blow. Else God was not just. Therefore, they say, the Negro as Ham descendant must still bear the curse. Must still bear the curse. End of quote. Now, the Broadman was saying what was believed, okay? They were telling us what was going on. I want, to, I want you to keep in mind that all of these ideas concerning Ham, black, and curse have all been perpetuated by so-called religious people. You know, this is one of those situations where Christianity gets a bad rap. And believe me when I say that it gets a bad rap, it has nothing to do with Christ himself. Any wrong thing concerning Christianity is through the fault of man and not God but man will throw blame at God for man's own mistakes. I'll give you an example. There was a man who cheated on his wife's best friend. Well, he cheated on his, on, he cheated on his wife with his wife's best friend. The woman became pregnant while at the same time the man conceived with his wife, thus potentially two pregnancies by two different women and being married to one which caused a lot of angst and frustrations and worry and bitterness and fighting and most of all lying. But what you have is a, a boiling pot of mess and at some point it's bound to rise to the rim. But before it got to that boiling point, he reached out for help, at least he thought he was. And I say halfway because he consulted with a bishop but he never told the bishop his full story. All he said was he has a lot on his plate and he needs God to forgive him. Well, the bishop told him God forgives, but he also, for, but you also must forgive yourself. And in due time, things will turn around. And after that discussion, he, he was feeling good. But a couple of weeks later, things got worse. His wife had a miscarriage and his mistress is demanding more from him. Then he goes back to the bishop angry, along with being frustrated, confronting him by saying, See, this is why people these days don't want, to, don't want to follow Christianity. He said, because of guys like you who tell us anything to sound good. So, in turn, the bishop explained to him this was no fault of Jesus, that the communication was not on point. The bishop said, I should have been more direct with you. And, and to see what you're seeking after and actually what your sin is. And he said, you should have been also more forthcoming because whatever you're doing, you can't hide it. It will come out in the open and maybe not today, but it will come out in the story. You know, Charles Stanley once said, never hold me up on a pedestal because I'm a man and I'm still prone to a sin nature. And that Jesus is the one you should always and only look up to because if I fall, I don't want to take you down with me. But if you're under my teaching and you learn from me, but while learning from me, you look up to Jesus. And if I happen to fall, Jesus is there to catch you from falling with me. In the book, Boys in the Hoods, by Johnny Lee Clary, Numa Life Publishing, copyright 1995, by Johnny Lee Clary. On page 169 and 170, Johnny Lee Clary, former imperial wizard of the KKK, now an ordained preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, makes this observation, quote, since many theologians, now, 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 listen because Johnny Lee is white. So don't, before you start throwing rocks at the angry black preacher in the blue pinstripe suit, Just remember, we're reading from the white man, and you know the white man is right. You know that. <laughs> Don't take it personal. Then call your name. 
Johnny Lee makes this observation, quote, since many theologians and historians have mistakenly concluded that Ham was the father of the black race, many white Christians were led to believe that the curse extended to all people of Negroid features or African descent. Motivated by a white supremacist oriented society, some white Christians developed an erroneous and unfounded theory that implied that the blackness of skin tone in Africans resulted from the curse that Noah imposed upon his grandson Canaan. Some white clergy and Christians alike use this particular biblical passage, passage emphasizing the issue of servitude to validate and sanction slavery, racism, exploitation, oppression, terrorism, and every other cruel and evil deed and inconceivable wicked act against blacks. End of quote. Quoting again, the sad commentary to all of this was the fact that the curse theory, oh, Jesus. Father, I repent for the church. On bended knees, Lord, I repent for the church. This is awesome. Listen to this. This, this is the white minister, formerly Grand Wizard of the KKK. Listen to this now. The sad commentary of all of this was the fact that the curse theory was started by white Bible-believing Christians who in turn introduced this theory to the rest of society. End of quote. Hey, I thank you all for checking this out. The end goal of this is to learn and grow that we learn from our own mistakes and that we are mature enough to co correct them when it's pointed out. Or if we find out our own, on our own, which would be even better, the bottom line is that we come away with this not being misinformed and to have a better understanding of, of what the Bible is telling us. And if we don't understand, then we need to have the unction to get understanding. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes into play. He's a gift from the Father, and we need to be in tune with him to better ourselves. And if we're not doing that, then what happens is you listen to ministers, preachers, or whoever that will feed you lies or misinformation because they are more in tune with Satan than the living God. So continue to renew your minds. Enough said.